Um, and so uh, the board revision, the, there's that window between January 1st and March 31st for folks to um, file those complaints, and then we will schedule hearings on those complaints. And one of the things we get asked a lot is, if the market tanks, what happens? You know, if all the property values go down. It, they will be adjusted, but they'll have to be adjusted through the board revision. And if we have to set more, seat more than one board, we'll do that. I'm praying that doesn't happen. I think we don't, none of us want that to happen. No, nobody wants their values to go down. I don't want my value to go down. Um, so, but, but you know, if we know that we have a history in our country of sometimes having boom or bust, I prefer to have a bubble and have it go down. So, we'll see what happens. But if it pops, we will deal with it. That's something we'll have to deal with. Um, the average increase in residential properties countywide is 35 to 36 percent. And I did not bring my sheet of paper that tells me what it is for each township. I forgot to grab that. But I will say overall, the northern townships, the percentage is less. All right? That's just the way it is. I live in Farmington. Um, my, our average is, I know our average is 24 percent. So it's less in the northern townships. And there's lots of reasons for that. Um, some of them have to do with the market. Some of them also have to do with, you know, your, your value, if you have a higher value property and it increases the same number of dollars that somebody's in Warren's does, obviously their percentage is going to be higher, right? So, uh, but, but we, uh, we definitely didn't get it as much in the northern townships. So that's some good news for us, I guess, a little bit. Um, average increase in agricultural property value countywide is 30 to 31%. I want to really stress here that I don't tax you. <laughs> the auditor is not raising your taxes, <laughs> contrary to what some people have said. Um, all I do is to follow the market and assign property values based on local market activity. That's all I do. Um, and I, obviously, if there's mistakes, it's a mass reappraisal. So right, if you do anything in mass production, there can be mistakes, and we're willing to look at mistakes and correct them as we need to. Right. So, I said I'm not raising your taxes, but they are probably going to go up. And it's complicated when we ask, what is the impact on my taxes? It's complicated. We have current levies, right? You have current, a current level of taxation in a taxing district. When you hear me say taxing district, in this case, we're talking about Kinsman Township, right? It might be the school district, which has a couple of taxing districts. But right now, for, for what we're talking about, it's Kinsman Township. So you have current levies in place, and obviously you have one on the ballot. So the effect is a little bit, the effect on the current levy is that, or the, I'm sorry, the levy on the ballot is much easier for me to tell because it's a new levy, so it's very easy. Old levies are harder to determine because not all levies are created equal. So some are voted on to set, to raise a set amount of revenue. And so as the total value of your taxing district goes up, the actual effective rate of that levy goes down. It makes sense, right? If you're only trying to raise a certain amount of money and you've got more, you've got, if you've got a bigger pie to draw from, then you're going to take less from each, each person, right? So the effective rate will go down. Some are set at a certain millage rate which doesn't change. It's never going to change. A, a good example of that, if anybody's ever heard of the inside millage, that's the first 10 mills. That's the first 10 mills of your taxation, which is 1.1% um, of what you're taxed, right? Um, those first 10 mills are divided between all the local governments, between county and the local governments, and they, those are constitutionally mandated. Nobody's voted on those, but they're part of the Ohio Constitution. Everything above your 10 mill limitation or your inside millage is voted on by its citizens of the taxing district. That 10 mils, though, is fixed. It's not ever going to change. That, that rate is the same no matter what. So you end up with a mix, right, of different types of levies in your taxing district. And so you'll have what's called your full rate and your effective rate based on that mix. So your effective rate and your full rate are actually all both displayed on your tax bill, tax bill, and your property value 
record. So if you look at your, at your property record online, if you scroll down, you'll see a place where it says full rate and a place where it says effective rate. In, in Kinsman, your full rate is 70.75 mils or 7.075%. <coughs> your effective rate is 57.59 mils or 5.759%. So you see that there's a difference. And you can see, based on that, if you've kind of been paying attention and understand it, you can see how it's really hard for me to tell you what your rate's going to be right now. Right? Yes, sir. <coughs> you may not know the answer to this, but I just it kind of popped I in my head. I probably don't. Okay. <laughs> well, how, how do, uh, and I'll just even use the northern townships because they're closer to the or similar in a lot of cases. Um, the millage, is there, are we, is it pretty, or do you, do you know or how okay. that compares so to other townships? I, I can tell you that just for, because I looked at mine, that yours is very similar to farming. Um, I just did Champions, and yours is lower than Champions. So I, I would say our rural townships probably are lower. I can't tell you exactly how much. I can't. I don't have that. that Obviously, right. because we have police. Ours would be more than Gus Davis or right, right, Bloomfield. Or, right. I think our, I think you're comparable with um, Farmingtons only because we have what we have as far as EMS, okay. which I was part of that. So. <laughs> My taxes are not going to go 